Welcome back to S2. Today we're going to look at approximating a Poisson distribution by a normal distribution. Now for this to, or well, for us to be able to use normal distribution as an estimate for Poisson, what we need to have is a large value of lambda. In terms of what we kind of regard as large, essentially anything greater than 10. Anything greater than 10 falls outside, you know, the tables which go up to 10. And that's a good indication. So anything larger than 10 is what we would use. So a Poisson distribution would be, say, the random variable x distributed with Poisson and our parameter is lambda. And now this is going to be approximately, if we change to y for our random variable, in terms of the normal then, our mean and our variance have to be lambda. So both of these values are the same. If you remember back to the kind of definition surrounding Poisson, you know that its mean and its variance are equal. So this is the approximation that we would use. And as I said previously, lambda really should be a value that is greater than 10. Now, in terms of actually a lot of the questions, once we convert our Poisson into normal, that kind of part of it, once that bit's over, for solving normal, you guys should be pretty confident with at this point. And if not, you know, pop back to some of the previous videos. So, you know, I won't do too much on that. I'll do one example, give you a few questions, and we'll go from there. But one thing to remember is that Poisson is discrete data, normal is continuous data. So we do need to be careful with the actual values that we're using. We must remember to apply continuity correction. So I'll just repeat that again. Poisson is discrete, normal is continuous, so we must remember to imply continuity correction. Let's have a look at an example. Now, just before we do get started into this example, remember that your calculators will be able to work these out straight away using the Poisson distribution. Okay, however, in your S2 exam, you'll obviously be asked to find an estimate because you won't be expected to find things solely in your calculator. So, you know, this value of lambda appears outside of your tables. It's larger than 10. So you'd never be expected to work this out for, you know, a greater than, a less than, and so on with these large numbers without using an approximation. Okay, if it was a value that was smaller or if you just had to find an equals or one or two values, like say a less than two, less than or equal to two, something like that, um, then it would be possible. Okay, but in this case, it's not going to be possible. It's essentially too much work. So you're always, you know, you're not going to be reliant solely on a calculator. So this type of question would be an approximation and you should be given that clue within the question. Anyway, let's make a start. First thing I want to do is write out what my distribution is. And then in terms of my approximation. Remember this is 40 and this one is also 40. Now sometimes you might see this second one written as you know the square root of 40 squared you know just to show that it is our variance but uh, it's often done really to make sure that you do use the square root of 40 as your standard deviation as sometimes people will forget that so writing in this method is to essentially avoid that but you know you don't need to um, if it's a nice square number then it's useful to do it. You know, if I had this value was say 25, then I could write this one as five squared instead. It makes a lot of sense that way. Um, in this one, it doesn't really make sense to write it down. I don't want to complicate things. So that's where I've got 
and now it's about solving it so we've got probability that x is greater than or equal to 25. now we've got an equals here so we don't have to worry about changing that we now need to essentially turn this in terms of our y so we have the probability that y is greater than or greater than or equal to remember with the normal distribution it doesn't really matter if you put that greater than in or not okay so this is going to be greater than 24.5 from here you know again i'll always do a little sketch i think just keeping it visual really does help you you know you've got your 40 there we're looking at greater than that 24.5 so that's the section that we are looking at so if i find my value for z so remember that's x minus the mean divided by the standard deviation that will give my value of z as negative 2.45 which is obviously exactly what we would expect and this is going to be the equivalent of a less than positive version of that value. So, you know, following on from here, we can say that this is the same as Z being greater than minus 2.45, which is exactly the same as Z being less than positive 2.45. And then at this point, I can go and look these values up in my tables. Now you can see in this case the 0.245 is exactly in the middle of these two values and exactly in the middle will give me 0 0.9929. So there we have it or correct to three significant figures there. And done. Nice and easy. If you check out in the calculator what it would have actually been with as a Poisson distribution, you'd actually get 0 0.996. So slight variation there, but as approximation, still a pretty good approximation. Now for part B, remember you first change this into an equals, so less than or equal to 51. Remember the reason we're doing that is just to get that consistency to make it a little bit easier so that we don't mistake or oh, sorry we don't make mistakes within our exam and our working out. So now when we look at our approximation we know that this is going to be less than 51.5 because when we're looking at less than we need to go that half above to include all the values that would round down to 51. And once I've done that, then it's the same process as before. So, you know, like I've said a million times, I like a quick little diagram, at least one. Sometimes I go a little bit more overboard and kind of do every step of the way with, with diagrams. And sometimes I don't. But this one's a nice easy one. Find our Z value. So it's just simply our 51.5. Minus a mean of 40 divided by the standard deviation, which is of course root 40, and we get 1.82 to three significant figures there. And then we can go ahead and look this up in our tables. So here we can see it is 0 0.9656. Nice and easy. final part we have one that's between two values so again first step is always make them both have an equals with them whether it's a less than or a greater than so in this case we need to change this one to 44 don't we x is less than 45 so it's going to be less than or equal to 44 once i've done that then i can go ahead and do my continuity correction and from there then I can go ahead and solve this. Remember that if you're unsure with these, just again, you know, think about drawing it out. You know it's between 38 and 44 is what we're looking at. And in terms of a normal, then we've got to go everything that rounds up to 38 
and everything that rounds down to that 44. So this is 38 point, sorry, 37 point five and 44.5 obviously technically it doesn't equal that but it'd be 44.4999999999999 and so on which you know for the benefits of calculations it's so close to that 0.5 that we can use it so that's what we've got and remember you know just in, in doubt visualize it if you can't visualize it in your head draw on paper to help you see it itself and that is exactly what I like to do every single time I'm doing these whether I do one diagram or more you know I always do this every time so we've got 37.5 44.5 so this is what we've got to find in total and what I want to do here is find my two Z values let's call it Z1 and z2 and in this kind of case it might be easier splitting them up but let's write down the two z values first so if i think of them separately my z of minus 0 0.40 would look like that and i don't want to find all of that do i because it's much easier if i actually just try and find half of that like this so this is the same as me trying to find this isn't it if I turn it into a positive and then I can say the same with the top one my zero point uh, sorry my zero point seven one and just do that so what I'm actually doing is I'm looking up this value I'll get this full value and I'll take away this 0 0.5 here and I'll take away this 0 0.5 on the second one and then my two answers added together will give me these two shaded areas which will give me this total shaded area so you can see here that 0 0.4 is going to give me this 0 0.6554 minus a half is 0 0.155 plus and then 0 0.71 we've got here is 0 0.7611 minus a half is 0 0.2611 so all I need to do now is add these together and that gives me 0 0.4165 and obviously due to the rounding working this out exactly using Poisson would give me 0 0.411 so obviously a slight variation there but it's to be expected because we're not only just taking an approximation in terms of going from Poisson to normal but we're also rounding these off so that we can use the tables of course if I use the full value of this in my calculator I would get an answer that is closer than this one to the actual value Hopefully you found this useful and like I've said numerous times you should be pretty competent with normal distribution now. It's just that starting point there of you know converting between your Poisson to your normal distribution. And of course as you'll see in the next video the most difficult bit is knowing which approximation to use when. But that's getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. So what I'll do now is I'm just going to pop a couple of questions up, nothing too difficult, give the answers at the end, and, and that's it. Nice short video with any luck. You should have no problems with this, and we'll be able to move quickly on to the next one, which will be quite nice.